when you're talking about One Piece is that you can't compare it to anything else. And not because we're like Oda stands just circle jerking each other off. Good clapping, everyone. Actually, the clap really threw me off, and I think I was earlier than everyone else. But no matter. You always need to be prepared, Sophie. We should go back to the system that we had. Three, two, and one. The system you never understood. Yeah, we should go back yeah. to that. That'd be great. That was good fun, actually. Because Manu and I were always somehow in sync, and you were just like... Yeah, what the fuck is <laughs> You just like actually like, like three you and a two to clap. and a one. <laughs> And a one, two, and a one, two, three, two, and two, clap. Two, one, 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 two, two. <laughs> that one worked. To be fair, it did work. All right, where are we? Well, welcome back to the thing it is we do. Uh, it's my week to host. Uh, I am severely underprepared for this. How are you doing, Sophie? That's disgraceful, Liam. I'm extremely disappointed. While you were sick, all you should have been thinking about is how do I prepare for this next Blue Banana episode? That's all what this I time. did when I was sick. That was all I was thinking about, yeah. That's all you were thinking about. What I was thinking about mostly had to do with various liquid excretions coming from various orifices. But uh, you're correct. Correct. I should have, my mind should have been elsewhere. Manu, how are you? I'm doing good. How are your orifices? In fact. Orifices? Orifices? Are you about to show us your orifices? <laughs> In fact. <laughs> In celebration <laughs> of your, uh, you're getting well, I brought a cat oh, in a box. A cat, the... cat in a box. You so shouldn't big. have. I love it. Look, it's a loaf. A loaf of bread. Very a loaf of when did he dad. get so big? He's massive. Yeah. That's the same cat. My god, they grow fast. You look you look you look so comfy in that. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'll I'll leave that I'll send that to you. I'll mail that to you, that loaf of bread. I'll uh, I'll leave it right next to me here. Cheers. I, I look forward to receiving it. I'm a big cat person. My wife is allergic, but you know what? Fucker. <laughs> We're just gonna get- I'm gonna get a cat. How about Puck? Puck does not like cats. In fact, Puck despises cats. But you know what? Fuck him. Fuck him too. He can learn to deal with it. He had a bad incident with a cat when he was young. One like jumped out of a bush and attacked him and now he's just paranoid Aww. about all oh, cats. Oh no. It's so funny to think about as well because if you see Puck, he's massive. Like Puck is probably oh, yeah. bigger than me even when he's on all fours. I reckon it would be easier to lift you than it is Puck. I would probably agree. He's colossal. Despite that, he is afraid of like teeny tiny cats. So now what he tries to do is get in a preemptive strike, like a growl, just as a bit of a warning, just like a stay away. He tries to project yeah. himself. I'm big. He has nothing to back it up, but he tries to project himself. With the exception of this one cat in our neighborhood who just does not give a shit. His name's Archie. He's a white cat and he just lies out there in the middle of the footpath giving no shits about humans, dogs. And Puck's just like, <laughs> I'm gonna go around that one. <laughs> No one messes with Archie. The cat is like, I'm calling all your bluffs. I did that with a couple of magpies this morning, actually. I saw a couple of magpies <laughs> just sauntering up and down my driveway, and I went, I'm going to use the lawn. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to take the other way. This space belongs to the birds now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is bird zone. If only you could cast a spell to make all birds go away, Sophie. <gasps> or... If only you trained enough so that it didn't even matter. Either way, you've not done what you needed to do. Smooth. Mm. Liam, Clearly. very smooth. You could have just slapped the birds out the sky. Biceps maho. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are talking about Marshall. Is it called Marshall? That is my first question. I've been watching it for a while now. Is it Marshall or Marshall? It has to be Marshall because that's how they say it. It's called Marshall in so Marshall, I think. Marshall, magic and muscles. Um, honestly, Manu, thank you so much for making me watch this. I never would have done it if it wasn't part of this podcast. <laughs> I love it. I love it more than I think I probably should, and I've gone so far as to actually start reading beyond where the anime is. Wow. Oh. Like it that much, huh? I take that as high praise. I'm actually blushing a little bit, and I'm like, my heart is racing <laughs> because this might be the first time that Liam Please has acknowledged one, yeah, <laughs> acknowledged one of my animes on this show. You finally brought me a non-trash offering, Manu. Nice, let's go. That's not true. I mean, you also brought us Suzume, and I quite like Suzume. And Blue Lock. Liam enjoyed 
liked Blue Lock. Oh, as and well. Blue Lock, yeah, I loved Blue Lock. All right, Lock. I'll take Mate. that back. Maybe it was just that one. Don't take my hatred of you two personally, man. But no, it is it is a really fun anime. I mean, I, I think we 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 kind of teased it in the last few episodes already. I genuinely had really low expectations for this because the way it mm. was sold to me was, oh, it's the Harry Potter anime, and I was like, oh, it's basically someone stole the idea of Harry Potter, but it's now an anime. So I was kind of expecting a really shitty like isekai or something. But no, it's like a Harry Potter anime in the best of all the ways, I think. It's like a Harry Potter anime, except it says, fuck you to Harry Potter. Literally, it's like, yeah, we're, we're gonna do all the tropes. That was absolutely my fear as well, because I've seen the promo images and stuff in Weekly Shonen Jump for a while, and every time I've seen it, it's just made me sigh. It's been like, oh no, someone has clearly been inspired by Harry Potter in my generation, and they've grown up, and now they're gonna do their own one, because the characters, I, I'll get into this in a bit, but they, um, they look a bit generic. Eric as well, which I think works very much to the series favor. On purpose, on purpose very much. Yeah, it absolutely did not sell it to me at all when I was looking at the promo material in the magazines. I was like, this is garbage, it's gonna be cancelled, I'm not gonna pay attention to it, but no, could not have been more pleasantly surprised. Sophie, what are your general thoughts? I think I'm gonna be very boring today because I feel like in the history of our podcast I've had all the controversial takes or I've been the <laughs> hater on this series, but I will say that I'm fully on board with this one as well. So, Manu, you have done the impossible. We and have you a full house. No! Both of ding, us. Ding, 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 ding. Has this ever happened? I don't know <laughs> I don't if we've know. ever all been on board with something. I feel like Susume. I feel like Sophie hated Susume. No. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I hated your name. No, I'm you kidding. fell asleep. Your name. Me falling asleep. That doesn't say anything about <laughs> no, how Sophie feels about you. No, it's not an indicator. It's not an indicator because Sophie if I'm going to be. If Sophie falls asleep during sex with you, you might still be very good at sex. <laughs> it's just a thing that happens. Well, I have to say, full disclaimer, I was watching the latest episode, which I think is episode eight. I'm not going to lie. I fell asleep. <laughs> Soapy. <laughs> But it's not for a lack of enjoyment. I'm just a very, very tired girl. Wait, I think <laughs> we've, we've established that. I'm a that. very sleepy person. But it, yeah, I do love it. I love it a lot. Even as someone who's not a huge Harry Potter fan. I think I've said that enough times now that I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan. Like, even though everyone else in my, I guess, around me grew up with it. It's not something that I personally grew up with, so I never related to it as much. Although I mm. do understand all the tropes because I have okay, watched, I, was about I think, to ask all of that. the movies. Like, do you get the references? I do get all the references because I have, I've read a couple of the books for school. I've even watched, I think I've watched all of the movies. So you've seen my wife then? Yes. I wouldn't have recognized her as your wife, but I'm sure I have. That, that, that slam! My, my wife, wife. Chantelle was in two of the Harry Potter movies back in the day as a young actor living in England. 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 Mm, England or Anglais. Anglais, as in French. Trois points. Douze points. <laughs> <laughs> that was a um, European, Euro, what is it, Eurovision Song Contest uh, Mate, do, joke, very niche. Don't get me started on Eurovision. I have strong opinions on it. We're here to talk about Marshall. We can get to that later. Let's start with Marshall. I'm just going to put this out there. there. Eurovision is one of my hidden passions, and I think this year was and controversial. And Finland should have won. I agree. One million percent. Cha 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 cha. Cha -cha. But more of that later. Back to Mashal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back to Mashal now, huh? Yeah. I meant as in the pronunciation, not as in the, not as in the show itself. Are we going to stick to Mashal or Marshall? Let's just call it Harry Potter. I think that's easier. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a weird relationship with Harry Potter. One being that I'm married to one of the actors who were in the films. I actually did not like the Harry Potter films at all. Loved the books. I was always very disappointed by the films. I can kind of relate to that i will say with the films it's one of these things that i have like a level of nostalgic positive childhood childhood memories mm. related to them so i'm fond of them in a nostalgic way i'd say but whenever i try to re-watch them with the sole exception of the third one which objectively is the best of the seven yeah with that with the exception of that one they just haven't hold up very well just because with the exception of the third one they're not trying to be something special and actually you know try to be a work of art in their own they just are like at the beginning they're kind of like the first two are like children movies <laughs> and then afterwards it's kind of more oh yeah our audience is now teenager you slash young adults we need to have cgi and some sort of teeny romance the later ones also had it a bit rough because 
because in the same sort of runtime, they had to adapt books which were two, three, four times the size of those first few. And I remember being particularly disappointed with The Goblet of Fire because it just, it all happened too fast. Like everything happened, but simultaneously nothing happened because they had to cut so much out of it. Literally, yeah. I'm actually curious, do you feel like, I mean, maybe for you, Sophie, as well, because I feel like with shorts on YouTube and like short form content in general, you have like over the recent, I would say maybe like four or five months, there has been like this split a little bit where before, even on YouTube, where you would be like, oh, a video of like 10 minutes is pretty good because people have the attention span of an ant. So like literally, you know, everything longer than 10 minutes, like people will, you know, go somewhere else. But now I feel like with shorts, it's kind of like changed where, yeah, you have that, you have those ultra short kind of like forms of content like TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts for like the people who actually just want like their quick dose of whatever when whenever they're waiting, waiting in line or on the toilet or whatever. Waiting in line on the toilet. Oh, That's either. Everyone's shorts. sitting in line on the toilet. We all carry a port -a -loo. Oh, You never know. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like it's kind of extended like long form content in the other direction where like now videos are kind of tending to be longer and like people who actually want to watch a video are way more willing to watch longer form content, which brings me it was a long transition. I just wanted to involve the, the YouTube side on it. But also feature film movies have gotten longer over the years recently. Look at like Dune and so on and so forth. Yeah. I don't think that's always a good thing. If there's a necessity for a film to be long, then I completely understand it. And there's no need to yes. cut it for the sake of just cutting it. I totally agree, which does bring me to my point though, which like feel free to like answer. So if you're like, do you feel it would have been nicer if the Harry Potter movies had been adapted more closely to, I, I mean, or maybe it's the wrong question for you since you haven't read the books. Uh, <laughs> never mind. I have probably. <laughs> no, no, Sophie, please answer. <laughs> I really hated all the scenes that they cut out that I didn't know that they cut out. Yeah, that they existed in the first place. <laughs> Maybe an entire battle of Hogwarts in the Half-Blood Prince. The thing I was looking forward to the most, man. Would you be excited to see that there is a three-hour version of the movie? Even not being a Harry Potter fan, I think knowledge of the fact that they have cut out so much material does make me say that, no, I think you should just stick to as close to the material as possible, unless you're going in a completely different route and, you know, trying to do something completely different, in which case, you know, if you do it well, then props to you. If you don't, then, you know, you probably should have just adapted it the way that it should have. I feel like some of those later books could be entire, like, eight to ten episode miniseries. Which, of course, they're producing right now. Are they? Yeah, they're creating. They're re they are recreating Harry Potter. Are you guys excited? I guess Liam didn't even know, but Manu, are you excited? I know it's been very controversial, and, the pe like, there's, like, people legitimately worried about it being, like, adapted too early, clo like, too close to, like, when the last books came out, or when the last movies came out, but honestly, again, like, similar to Liam, where I feel like the, the movies did not, I mean, they're iconic in their own rights, and, like, Daniel Radcliffe and so on, Emma Watson, Rupert Grant, obviously super iconic in their roles, but I'm... Um, Honestly, given how disappointing the Harry Potter franchise movie-wise has been the recent years, having a studio like HBO or like something with the production quality as HBO, like take that on and- Is it HBO? Yeah, and hopefully give it like a proper spin. That makes me slightly more excited to be honest if it was a netflix thing i think i would have been a bit like mm -hmm. no it's hbo so like good production i mean they're, they're known for like westworld game of thrones and i'm sure they're gonna spend the money on a franchise name as big as harry potter i mean it's harry potter it's guaranteed yeah and in the in the worst case it's just gonna be another kind of disappointing <laughs> <laughs> harry potter product but on the upside it might just be like a chance to reinterpret things and i do actually even though i've also grown close to the visuals that warner brothers has created around the the series i would not be mad at all if they actually reinterpreted things a little bit differently this time and like change the visuals completely from scratch kind of what the rings of power for lord of the rings didn't quite dare to do like they kind of got stuck in this weird in between where they tried to like copy the you know, previous movies, but not really. They were trying to be in the same world. So they were trying to carry that style over. Whereas this would be a complete, I was going to say a complete reimagining, but it's, it's, it's different things. So I'd be very down for that. And I feel like it would be exciting to have like, maybe also a bit more of a mature take on it. Who knows? Like, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Okay. I am mildly intrigued. But speaking of the complete opposite of that, uh, Marshall <laughs> is kind of like speed running Harry Potter. I don't know if either of you have gotten further than the anime. No. But very shortly after that in the manga, you just get hit with Harry Potter event after Harry Potter event. And I'm like, we're just trying to do seven years of Hogwarts in like six months of Marshall. And it's 
pretty amazing. Is it still ongoing? Yeah, it is still ongoing. Still ongoing, but it's about to end, apparently. Yeah, until it's final that's what arc. I heard as well. And you're caught up, Liam? Or? I'm not caught up. I'm about halfway through at this point. How many chapters are yeah, there? Yeah, wow. It's under 200. There's not that many. It's manageable. It's only about like 11, 12 volumes from what I remember. Maybe a little bit more. And so far, it hasn't lost its, uh, <laughs> its magic, I suppose. <laughs> Stakes keep getting consistently raised, like to impossible levels and the solution to everything is just the one punch man yeah i'm gonna hit it and it's always satisfying i don't know why it it's is always so satisfying, satisfying. <laughs> it is, it so is satisfying. very satisfying it's kind of like the same as, as with one punch man where you're always like oh is this gonna be the boss who's finally gonna be like trouble for him this is gonna be the but one but you kind yeah. of don't <laughs> want them to be and when they're not it is really satisfying <laughs> yeah. for me personally even though i know that he's going to find a way to just punch his way out of it and just brute force his way out of the situation each time i'm like how are you gonna get out of this mm -hmm. how how are you going to fly on a boat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like his legs that was like peak television for me this this year yeah. already where it was like how are they gonna do the quidditch thing yeah. <laughs> i was like all righty and i like that they just got it over with in one thing it's not an enduring plot line like it is in harry potter it's just like no i set a new world record never touching quidditch again oh, so just so good quidditch was actually a sport that was played at my university mine too people joined quidditch teams super popular did you play liam as a harry potter fan absolutely not does look a little bit sad i will say when you watch people play it it's kind of like mm. no, at my school instead i uh was part of the humans versus zombies group where every weekend we would go to a park and we were all dealt cards at random you'd have two zombies and the goal would be to turn all of the humans or if you're a human to survive the duration. Oh, so it's kind of like werewolf? It's like werewolf, but with nerf guns. So it's not werewolf at all. So if the zombie touches you, you also become a zombie. If you hit the zombie with a nerf bullet, then they get paralyzed for X amount of time, so you can run away. Yeah, and there were like 70, 80 of us who did that every weekend. It was pretty fun. So not really like werewolf, okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> no, not at all. Forget that I said anything along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> it's like werewolf, but completely different. <laughs> I just wanted to include you, so I went along with what Thank you were you. saying. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can I ask? This this is becoming a bit of a thing now with One Punch Man, Marshall, and I'm sure something else as well. What is the opposite of an underdog, and why do I love it so much? A top dog. A top dog? An overdone? Well, I guess it's like the classic trope of the the reason it works for like Mob and One Punch Man and Mashal, I think. Like you would think like, oh, with One Punch Man, that trope is kind of like, oh yeah, it worked once, but never again. No, like clearly it's like a whole genre. Like my theory would be that you have to make your character like an underdog. Like an underdog in life? Look-wise and ambition-wise. Like they have to be like very low ambition, very like unthreatening looking. And I think people really vibe with, oh, no one expects this random dude who cares about x random boring thing to be the strongest secretly in this world and he gets caught into that net kind of for like of of that world that power structure of the world and whenever people are like cocky they just like always shell against him. And I feel like that's just like a very satisfying formula to to watch, I would say. It's kind of like in those Hollywood movies where you have that old old retired gentleman guy who's actually used to be like CIA, special force, whatever, and he just like wipes- Like Liam Neeson, they have a very particular set of skills. He doesn't look, and then he's like just, you know, he like likes, you know, walking his dog and collecting, you know, like stamps. And then like the John Wick formula kind of, you know, where like mess yeah. with the wrong person. Yeah. Yeah, I loved the arc when Marsh broke up the prostitution ring. That was, that's one of my favorites. You haven't gotten to that one yet. I'm looking forward to it. I do think that, and this is not necessarily a good thing, because this formula has been proven to work very well on multiple occasions now. Is this going to be like an isekai scenario where they got really popular a few years back and ever since we have just been flooded with generic isekai after generic isekai. If it does it well though, I don't know why we would be scared of people trying the same formula. Because they won't all do it well. No, they won't, but you know, there will be some gems and if we get another show like Marshall, then I think that's a plus. And I think the thing that Marshall does well is that it doesn't take itself very seriously at all. Yeah. And I think it knows that, I don't know, I don't know how to say this, it's not the best 
series, but in the same time, it sort of is the best series because it's not trying to be the best. You know, it's just trying to provide a lot of fun mm. and it does that and it sort of hits all the marks that you want it to. It's really trying to just be Marsh himself. He's just trying to mm. be adequate. <laughs> like it's not striving to be peak fiction. It's just, no. here's a fun idea executed well. Like, let me know if you agree with this. I feel like on the Shonen spectrum, classically with the Luffy's and Naruto's, etc., etc. at the beginning, very low power, but very like high intensity ambition. character, dreams, ambitions. Opposite, exactly. Right? Yeah. No ambition whatsoever. But max level. All I want is to get shoe cream. That's a very fascinating observation. It's like the inverse shonen hero. And I do guess like um, while normal shonen characters kind of like their journey is getting stronger physically while like they're special because of their ambition. For like these types of characters, it's more like like their arc is because of the comedic element, it's not as serious, but there's like a kind of like a bit of an underlying arc where for them, it's more like finding something that actually, you know, like gives them meat. Like for example, like, Saitama and One Punch Man, you could say, oh, but isn't he happy? But clearly, like, you know, he, he, yeah, <laughs> he's bored. So, like, I feel like for him, the journey is about realizing that, that uh, it's, it's about, you know, like, the, the fun he has fighting and, like, helping other heroes and so on and so forth. So there is, like, an arc there, like, finding an actual purpose, quote unquote, in life, I feel like, is, like, this more subtle, like, journey in all those, in all those stories. Like, for Mob, I would say, it's probably, like, just growing up and, uh, kind of, in a way, yeah. I mean, so you have, like, that subtle arc going on there. Like, that, that would be my theory. <laughs> I, I really like your theory. I really enjoy that observation of the, uh, the reverse shonen. That's probably why it works so well, because you just flip the balance. Of course it's gonna work. It's still balanced, but it is flipped it feels new and exciting i'm sure like there's always gonna be whenever there's like gonna be something successful in a format that's like new and f successful obviously there's gonna be people attempting it but i feel like that this format is more risky to pull off than the classic shonen format it's not as proven and i feel like if it's not good enough it might just not trickle to the top as easily as a normal shonen would here's what i'm thinking though due to specifically marshall Marshall's formula. Do we then see that with a bunch of other things? Like, do we see One Punch Man in the Lord of the Rings universe? Do we see One Punch Man take on Star Wars? Do we see etc. I mean, I could see it. I mean, yeah, I could see that too. And I could understand your worry a little bit more in that case, Liam. All I'm saying is, if I'm a lazy anime creator with no original ideas, I'm looking at this and going, fuck me. I could just take this thing that's already successful with this formula that's like super hot right now, we mush them together. I feel like Isekai goes into that direction too, where it's like, oh, what if you just were reborn and were like this ultra powerful person? That's exactly what I mean, because that's what they're doing right now. They're like, fuck, what can I rebirth as? We've done slime, we've done fridge. No, we've done vending machine, is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. vending machine. What, what's next? Uh, my new life is panties in another world. I watched that. I, I know you would. But no, I, I mean, I can totally see it. I mean, as with anything media, right? There's like kind of little blurry lines between genres there. But I think it would be interesting and you can kind of see uh, with, with shows even like The Lord of the Rings where you have like characters like Tom Bombadil. I'm not sure if you're familiar. But he's that like old guy. No one knows who he really is. Is he like God or the author? The lurking legend. Yeah, he's basically the strongest being in the entire universe but he just lives in the forest and like chills there. And what is it? The reason why they don't give him the ring is because they thought that he would just lose it, disregard it? Yeah. Exactly. So, and people go fucking nuts with like, oh, what, like, what would happen if he like participated and like wiped the ground with everyone? John Bombadil versus Gandalf. Death battle. John Bombadil for <laughs> John Bombadil. <laughs> Someone kills Tom Bombadil's dog, and he goes on a rampage of Middle yeah. Earth. <laughs> yeah. Does he have a dog? I don't know. He has a wife for sure. And he has a lot of animal friends. He has like flowers he takes care of. Someone burns down his forest. They killed his vegetables. <laughs> now he's coming for Middle Earth. You killed Tom Bombadil's vegetable garden? We're all fucked. <laughs> I have an apology to make to neither of you. I would never apologize to either of you for anything. And you're just going to have to live with that. I don't accept. That's a shame, Sophie. We're, we're going to have problems, clearly. This apology goes out to A1 Pictures because I remember, mm. I don't want to use the word trash, but I remember trashing them when we were talking about Licorice Recoil and going through their list of things and going, uh, it's, it's the mid company. Okay, so A1 Pictures also does Marshall. And you know what? Being the mid company works really well for Marshall, and I think they've actually done a fantastic job with it. So, sorry. I think it goes back to the fact that 
they know what they're doing with this. It's not trying to be peak fi fiction. It's not trying to be peak animation. They're not doing all this crazy stuff where things have to be like super fast. It's just, it's just fun. It's just goofy. It's a lot of fun and they do it. They do everything really well. Something that I particularly love is that both the intro and the outro. Every time we hear the, what is it? Like, um, cream, chocolate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that, dude, that song is yeah. so addictive. <laughs> I get so happy. <laughs> the first time we watched it, we were all like, oh, this is so lame. And then like one one episode later <laughs> i know it grows on you Shut the first up. time i watched it i'm like okay i'm gonna fast forward through this because i know i'm not gonna like this but every subsequent time it started up i got through a little bit more of it until eventually i was just listening to the whole thing oh it's just so good <laughs> yeah, it's a grower not a shower the first time you see it it's so out of place as well because yeah you do have some association to the cream puffs but not really in that first episode so it just really comes out of nowhere i actually love how much they incorporated cream puffs into to the series in general. I thought it was just going to be like a, a odd character quirk. And then when you get that episode where it's like his assignment and every time he makes it, it turns into a cream puff when he's trying to create some sort of potion. Which uh, other blatant Harry Potter ripoff things? Are they mandrakes in Harry Potter? Like the screaming Oh, uh, I think there might things. be, yeah. Uh, now that you mention it, I think I remember something like that. I didn't realize at the time. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps <laughs> becoming a cream puff and what's his name? Yeah. Lance Crown. And it's just like, yeah, how, like, how, how does this keep happening? I, I was watching the entire time. How did that happen? It was like one of those moments again, like with the Quidditch, where you're kind of wondering, like, oh, how are they gonna, yeah, how is he gonna make potions and stuff? And <laughs> just shoot Look, In theory, that's like the one class that he should yeah, he be could kind actually of okay. do, yeah. yeah, which makes it even funnier in a way. Speaking of Lance Crown, firstly, love the ridiculous names in Marshall, which I think is on purpose because Harry Potter names can get absolutely absurd. So I think the author had a a lot of fun with this just going uh weapon plus headwear lance crown that's your name that that sounds good but also siscon makes an appearance in this anime and for once oh it does yeah for once in my life it doesn't immediately make me cringe because it knows exactly what it is it's like oh okay you're into this this is your trope you're that guy and he fully in he admits it he embraces it every time he's like oh it's the lolicon guy no it's Siskon yeah. to you <laughs> no Siskon then that's supposed I, to make I'm it better Siskon. that's yeah. true he actually corrects them I forgot yeah it does. <laughs> from a meta perspective it knows what it's doing it's not trying to like play the theme seriously it's just mm. like right this is the trope that's your thing and we're going to be very blunt about it yeah i mean with all the characters right mm. like the um the redhead character guy as well it's just like it's a standard trope about a character who's just you know falls in love with girls but then is such a like such a boisterous character because like i feel like in all of these like whether it's one punch man or or like mob or whatever you always need that the guy who should actually be the main character <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was just made fun of really badly. It's like how in One Punch Man you have how you have generals who's like that classic like shown any like ah oh, want to be the strongest. Has all the cyborg. ambition, but comparatively none of the power. Yeah. I was gonna say I have a serious question. It's not really serious. I'm interested. At what point can you sue if you are Harry Potter? with this oh like how dangerously does this ride the line of that is blatant infringement oh uh, it's parody though right it is japan doesn't really have a, a parody clause though that's, that's a classic case of japan they're like but you guys have you're like you can't copy us but we can copy <laughs> yeah. you copy you <laughs> copyright strikes straight out that's what's gonna happen but not for us yeah because it would be jk rowling who would have to sue it is clear parody but it's just like it is it's so harry potter that it feels to me like it really like I'll spoil one little thing there is a Triwizard Cup a Triwizard Tournament that happens fairly relatively after I've been watching and they barely change the name at all I think it is just legitimately called the Triwizard Cup or something I feel like it gets lazier and lazier <laughs> as the series goes and on. that makes it just so fun <laughs> it's like the same with like they're like oh we're just gonna have you know, three houses, and it's gonna be an eagle, an yeah. orc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they Won't even have their sorting own sorting hat, hat with the yeah. unicorn. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Which was one of my favorite scenes. It like trying to find the roundabout way to place Marsh into Adler. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cream puffs. <laughs> Cream puffs like that that can't be the only thing, that can't be our only ambition. <laughs> <laughs> the way that I actually feel about the series is like it's a fan fiction that's better than the original. I mean, as a non-Harry Potter fan. I, I don't disagree <laughs> with you. 
<laughs> I, at my current age, enjoyed this a lot more than I think I enjoy Harry Potter. I can see that. Again, I feel like Harry Potter, like, the reason it works is because many people are passionate and familiar with Harry Potter, so I'll defend it a little bit there. But it's definitely way better than most of, like, the movies that have come out. All of them. Easily. In my opinion. Yeah. It would be interesting to get the, the opinion of someone who was just completely blind to Harry Potter somehow and went into this as to just what it is i feel like it still works as a concept per se because it like i think you mentioned it last time liam because it doesn't only make fun of harry potter it also makes fun of anime tropes in general of anime yeah. in general yeah so it has like a second layer to it that i think would work for people who magically have never heard about harry potter see what i did there they do exist allegedly <laughs> so yeah i think it, it still stands on its own feet but it definitely like i feel like the appeal is definitely in the <laughs> in the parody to me at least. I think that's hilarious. I think it would lose a big layer, but at the same time, I don't have the capability to understand what I'd be missing without it. That is that yeah, is true. Exactly. That's correct. Very well put, Liam. Why, thank you. <laughs> I feel like even if you don't know Harry Potter, or like you've never read or watched the movies, I think it just has penetrated so deep into like popular culture at this point, in, like on so many levels like, that... Everyone knows what a Dumbledore is. Yeah. Or what he yeah. looks like. The idea or of like, like Harry Scott. Or like or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Even like Quidditch. Definitely Quidditch, yeah. The castle. People know the castle, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it I is kind of inescapable, I think. So it definitely was in my generation. I don't know so much about younger ones, like the sort of Sophie level, but in my generation, Harry Potter was all-encompassing. Harry Potter was all-encompassing in my grade as well. I think I was probably one of the very few people who weren't huge fans of the series. I think I've said this before. Harry Potter is... I, I, I don't understand how Harry Potter has managed to have the sway that it still does even in, like, younger generations because I've tutored kids who do not like books and the only book they will read is Harry Potter. And they're, like, you know, 10, 15 younger than I am. There's legitimately some magic in those books books and i don't like say that as a pun have you guys seen the videos of the aussie guy who does like what if an aussie was at all <laughs> if not i strongly <laughs> recommend yeah. dose of australian culture drinking butter beer that's sponsored by vb put that on the to-do list in the meantime i have um something else on the to-do list our editor has requested a discussion about uh, a topic that we've never discussed before we've never talked about this on the we've blue banana podcast it. before i think he was expecting it smoother <laughs> they're calling him out throwing him under the bus there i gave him the smoothest transition i could conjure in my current state we're just we're going in dry to this there is no transitional lube one piece uh the anime it's getting pretty damn good right now in its oh, yeah. uh funky animation-y ways. Manu, I know you have opinions on this because I follow you on Twitter. <laughs> Sophie, I know you have opinions on this because you're just happy one PC. And I know I have opinions on this because I'm me. So what do you think of the current state of the anime as we approach the climax of Onigashima? I'm really enjoying it. So I'm guessing Manu hasn't been. I haven't really been on Twitter, so I don't know if you've been tweeting about this, Manu. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, recently, it's a bit of a dumpster fire. <laughs> more more <laughs> of a dumpster fire than it used to be. It was, of course, already. But anyways, please proceed. No, I've been really enjoying it. Although I do have to say, as someone who's neither a Sanji nor a Zoro stan and loves them both equally, it is funny to see the treatment of the two in the anime because it's not as bad in the, I guess, more recent episodes where Sanji really got like a good episode as well when they did his fight with Queen but it's that scene when um, Marco is introducing the two to take the stage it was pretty funny to watch Zoro get like I don't know 10 minutes of action just just solely focused on <laughs> Zoro like all of the all of the haki all of the lights and Sanji gets like a little fraction <laughs> and then so it's always fun to watch things like that although the anime was still done very nicely the way that they've been going again for Zoro's episode as well against King movie standard I reckon <laughs> definitely movie standard in terms of animation. What I will say is they definitely put a lot of work into it. Manu, I can see your face. Yeah, you're um, grimacing. Please, okay. Please, so please I do expand. <laughs> I will I will praise the anime, including you guys, the people who legitimately say this is movie quality. I feel like need to watch anything that's actually a movie. <laughs> Certain scenes are definitely movie quality, not entire episodes. Yes, here here is what I give the anime. Like animation quality has gone up a fuck ton. There are, as you said, there are certain themes that they clearly put a lot of effort into make look good. And then there are certain things that they don't. Yes. And I will still say, like, me personally, 
I don't have a problem with it, but I could see someone mm. being critical who doesn't like, who's mm. maybe like a more casual One Piece fan, even in the mm. scenes, like let's say the fight Zoro versus King, which arguably, and I thought was very awesomely animated. Even there, you could say like, there were like a bunch of scenes where you just had like lines that were supposed to be like lights or whatever. And it was just kind of lazily drawn and not, maybe not even lazily, but like I, I took it as like a, as character and art, art, like as an art choice maybe. And it, I could see how it's like a nice way to make it look good, but also not like have to spend crazy amounts of time on an episode that needs to come out within a week so for me it's not a problem but i could clearly see someone who's used to like other shows and watches this who's like eh, i mean come on this is like not even cleanly drawn properly right so i feel like the movie level is a little bit too much for me i don't know man i watched film red and apart from like a lot of action and singing scenes the animation in that ain't so hot either yeah i totally agree <laughs> so i guess then what we're what the standard is is the anime has been one piece film standard <laughs> okay <laughs> okay i will give you that okay i'm i'm on board with that it's one piece film quality i'll, I'll give you that the thing when you're talking about one piece is that you can't compare it to anything else and not because we're like go to stands just circle jerking each other off it's because it is in its own lane for better sometimes and for worse sometimes it's really difficult to compare it to other properties just because it's gone on for so long and it has so many weird restrictions in its production and it's just when i think i say movie quality i'm definitely comparing it to one piece movies no that is fair <laughs> enough and i would i will give you that if we're looking at like actual animated movies not even going all the way to makoto shinkai or whatever which would obviously be impossible for like uh you know 20 minutes whatever per week but even like something like demon slayer or something that is just leagues above but also the one piece movies i would say animation wise but i will like absolutely i think it's like on level as like a full 60 minutes hype at least for one piece level highly produced movie i, I will totally uh, agree with that the thing with me and the anime like the reason i dropped it for a very long time and i'm actually now catching up with wano in general like i dropped it during dress rosa just because it was so so terribly slow. I was very much willing to watch it weekly to a certain degree until I decided to just pick up the manga and read the manga. And once you actually are used to like things moving and you already know what's gonna happen, you're not sitting through like 10 minutes of like close-ups panning between Doflamingo and Luffy. Yeah. So like now going back, like clear, we talked about this before, it's, it's things like Demon Slayer and Jutsu Kaisen and whatever, like they have kicked the entire anime industry in the butt where even Toei was like, okay, we cannot, you know, like leave things as we are. Like, this is just not doable. And I'm not sure. I'm just imagining that given how an many animation studios in Japan don't really care as long as the numbers are right, I'm just going to assume that the numbers weren't right anymore for One Piece, that they made such a drastic change because I'm sure they're spending way much more money than they used to um, on what they're doing now. And that's a mm. big no-no. That's that's less money for the people who own it. So, well, Actually, uh, I, I'm just going to um, step into you for a second because I'd actually like to paraphrase what you said on Twitter. You know what? I'm not going to paraphrase it. I'm going to quote it. Oh my God. Honest take on the One Piece anime right now. I love that they are finally taking good animation seriously. It looks absolutely stunning and I finally really enjoy watching the anime again. And there's another bit. <laughs> I also feel like what I'm watching has nothing to do with the manga anymore. LOL. And that's the end of the tweet. Which I, I don't disagree with. <laughs> Movie quality tweet. For better or worse, I don't disagree. Um, especially the King fight. I think the Sanji fight was much more on point. The end of Zoro versus King was fucking wild. <laughs> like, there was so much to love about it. But also it was like, there were moments where I was watching it where I was going, am I still watching One Piece? What is happening? <laughs> exactly. It's it's legitimately like, if you tell someone, like someone watches the manga, uh, the anime, let's say to like Punk Hazard or like Dress Rosa, and then suddenly they're like, ah, oh, you know what? I just want to see what's going on right now. Let's skip ahead a little bit. And suddenly it's fucking Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> like people fly, like Zoro is fucking suddenly, like, you, you go from Dress Rosa where Zoro is just standing around and running funny with the mustache for most of the time. Like, like from left to right and suddenly he's fucking <laughs> flying on laser beams <laughs> through the air <laughs> you're like oh my god what happens so very enjoyable and i enjoy the the anime as a different piece like as a different kind of, as we said with like harry potter maybe as a different interpretation of the story but if you are if you are someone who really values continuity i feel like if you start binging one piece today we're like yeah you have different art styles over the decades, no question, and like different choices, but nothing has been as extreme, I personally would argue, as the jump like that was made during Wano. But I also think that the Zoro and King episode is a bit 
of a greater outlier than most just because it Is was it? an anime just because it was centered around Zoro like you're absolutely right in the fact that it seems like Zoro lives end? in the I world from that. yeah lives in the world of Dragon Ball like when I was watching this I like l legitimately thought holy shit they've made Zoro into Goku like he could fight anyone in any in any anime. And this is coming from people who haven't seen Dragon Ball, I'd like to remind everyone. Yeah. <laughs> the impression is that strong. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, be me listening to all of the Dragon Ball sound effects from the Toei library that I was hearing when I was 12 years old. And it's like, this is getting very Dragon Ball. Yeah. I would make a very bold statement and argue that in my five year career or like not quite four and a half year career on youtube i've probably invested more money into sound effects than toy animation has <laughs> they have been using the same stuff like the walking sounds for one piece like luffy's track, track. <laughs> it's always the same stuff zara's like sword sound you know that collective of swords that you just hear every now and then the or whatever it is, I can't do it. But you would know the sound because you've heard it like thousands of times. And you could like, obviously like playing devil's advocate, people would say, oh, but they're so iconic. You can't just like take them away. And I'm like, fair enough, keep them, but at least layer some more stuff on top of it. <laughs> it's kind of, you have that next level animation, but then you have the exact same sound effect you, you already had during like the Alabaster. Exact same, like Super Saiyan key blast and the swords. And I want to say something positive. I don't mind if the anime goes in more of that direction of doing its own thing because it's an adaptation. An adaptation shouldn't have to have to really do that one-to-one -one perfect manga thing. If it wants to do something wild at least it's being creative. But what I want is consistency from that creativity. I don't just want it where there's like a two minute clip that makes it to Twitter every month of that one scene that they put effort into and the rest of it is just kind of there. In terms of creative choices, I'm completely on board with the consistency. Yes, things should be consistent. And I am also up for the anime finding its own creative style and a creative telling of the story. But in terms of how far it strays as an adaptation and whether that means that it can take the story in a different way to where the an where the manga is, I'm not sure I'm quite on board with that because I wouldn't apply that for any other series. No story. But the way that they portray certain things has always has an impact on how mm, on how, how that people perceive the makes, characters. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that changes the story. It's sort of um that rubs me the wrong way. So you weren't a fan of it. I enjoyed it. I thought so it was you a, hate I, One Piece. <laughs> you fell asleep during the fight, didn't you? You're lying on Twitter. You said <laughs> this is cinema. But I said as well that he's literally like Goku now. Movie quality that Sophie falls asleep in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we talked about this way before where I was like we were talking about the anime I remember when that scene came out like maybe like a year ago or like probably even longer when Zoro was fighting Killer right and I was like if Zoro is suddenly breaking like giant stone blocks when he jumps and flies like a you know like a jet towards Killer, where do we scale from here? And we were completely right, because I think after that we said, well, you've just got to keep going upwards. And that's exactly what they did with the King Insanity, yeah. Okay, so again, I, I did my praises of the anime and I'm watching it again. So <laughs> let me let me, <laughs> let me be critical, please. One thing I'll also say as, as nice as the animation is, and I'm enjoying it, it is often a little bit hard for me to understand what's going on because they're just throwing in fancy stuff for the fun of it, where it's like flames fl in front of the, and then like stuff explode, like rocks exploding. And I'm like, where are we right now? Where are the characters and so on and so forth. Sometimes it just feels like a firework, like cool colors and explosions and almost losing track of what's happening in the fight. And again, I've, I'm just wondering, it feels weird if Zaro can fly like a jet through the air and do like Super Saiyan, like, how is he ever like Egghead Island? He like blocks stuff with his sword. He has a norm more or less normal sword fight. Like if I was an anime watcher and they're not going to have like Super Saiyan in that scene and every scene that Zoro has like a like mildly uh, important like fight in the future, you're like, oh, what happened? Is Zoro holding back crazy here? Or like, oh, why is he not blasting everyone with Super Saiyan right now? I get what you mean. And this is why I say that I feel like this is a problem that has almost become exclusive to just their portrayal of Zoro, just because of how popular Zoro is as a character. Like I didn't feel that when I was watching Sanji. I just thought this was animated really well and I really enjoyed it. Sanji, no, I get that feeling with Luffy though as well. I was about to say, Luffy, same for Luffy. Again, it looks great and I enjoy watching it. Again, when when you, your character is 
on that super insane level. Like there is, yes, we're going into the last, you know, last saga and so on and so forth. And One Piece might be ending in the next two, three, four, five, who knows, like the next couple of years. Still, there is clearly still a bunch of major fights left in the story for Luffy and Zoro. And like, that is what I would expect. What I've seen right now is like what I would expect to see in like the, the final showdown with the final villain. It's almost as if the anime was like, okay, we have bad numbers. We need to get people watching again. Let's just treat Wano as if this was the end of the anime and like Kaido is the final boss and King is the final boss and like these characters are just like at their ultimate level right now basically yeah, fully unlocked it's tricky as a creative you would never want to hold back on anything if you've got a big grand vision for something cool of course you'd want to execute it but I do think there is also an element as a creative of knowing when to hold back specifically what to focus on because I think Oda does a very good job of this through just like raw choreography through just like showing bodies moving on page rather than all of the like how you put it fireworks i guess like when you look at both movies and anime like there's a lot of like epic like Ev avengers level kind of you know whatever you want to you know call it super like fireworky like exciting fight scenes and people are like oh that was really epic but the fights that actually get remembered are usually a lot a lot more grounded you have two people actually showing off their skill i know like people are like there are certain powers that are being shown in the anime and then show that and make it special but like you know, like it doesn't feel like the, these special attacks don't feel special when when they're being used all the time. I've, like one thing I noticed is like King said, how do you don't like I think like five. He had like one attack. He was spamming for the, for like 15 minutes of the anime every time. I don't remember. It, it might have been that way in the manga, but it's just it, it definitely didn't feel like he was just spamming one attack he felt like a much more versatile fighter but like king's thing in the fight was basically i'm gonna do the same attack but i'm gonna like dial it up by like 10 every time i'm gonna do this attack yep um according to mano one piece doesn't feel special anymore sophie do we have any special <laughs> members to announce always have special members wake up special members special members we're talking all members you. are okay. special controversial opinion here and all watches are special. Everyone say hello and welcome to Lovely Kitty. Hello lovely Kitty. And welcome, okay. Lovely Kitty. Oh, all right. Amazing. Thank you, Lovely Kitty. All right. That's that's fantastic. It's been great talking to you. I enjoy that from time to time on roughly a once per week basis. We should uh, announce next week's anime. I was going to do that. No, come on. <laughs> no, you're the you're the announcer. No, you're the announcer. Next week we are watching. Fuck, I forgot what is it called. Hell's Paradise. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I had fuck, to what is it? Whatever it is. It. What's his name? I I got stumped. Um, it looks like it has a lot of swords. There's a, a lady That's in good. white, and there's a blonde man, and I'm sure it'll be good. And we'll talk. If it's not, we'll shit on it next week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for talking, two of you. Thank you so much. Yes, anytime. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Not anytime, yeah. just once a week. Just once well, a week. That's, yeah. that's, anytime, that's once a week. Barrier. Actually, just Tuesdays. <laughs> just specifically Tuesdays. All right. Yes. I'm about to run out of battery. Bye. Bye. <laughs>